Hello and welcome back to the channel. For this episode, I thought we would look at some basic audio compression terms and discuss what they mean and how they function. These are some pretty normal compressor adjustments. If your compressor doesn't have all these adjustments, don't worry about it. The ones you do have access to will still function exactly as what I'm describing here. Let's start with the two most likely controls you'll find, threshold and ratio. And in particular, let's start with the threshold control. If your signal doesn't reach the level your threshold is set at, then the compressor will have no effect on your signal. This graphic shows a visual example of your threshold. The signal, in this case music, is under the threshold, so the compressor is doing nothing to the music. If we were to lower the threshold, or if the music was to increase in volume, either way, and that music level exceeds the threshold that we've set up, the compressor will then begin compressing the signal. Nothing happens until our signal reaches and exceeds the threshold that we've set. That's where our next control, ratio, comes in. Most of the time, the ratio control will start with 1 to 1. 1 to 1 means for 1 dB in, we'll get 1 dB out of the compressor. That essentially means it's doing nothing at that minimum setting. At 2 to 1, that means for every 2 decibels in, we'll only get an additional 1 decibel out. 3 to 1 means for every 3 dB in, we'll only get an additional 1 dB out. This pattern continues on. 4 to 1 is 4 dB in, 1 dB out, and on up to higher ratios, even like 10 to 1, which is for every 10 dB in, we'll only get 1 dB out. Most compressors will have metering to show you this gain reduction. That meter might be labeled gain reduction, it might be labeled GR, or it might be labeled compression. Some compressors might only have one meter, but there will probably be a switch or a button so you can choose what that meter is showing you. It's important to pay attention to your gain reduction meter so you can see when your signal is crossing the threshold that you've set and just how much compression you're using. Obviously, your ears will be the final judge as to how much is enough and how much is too much, but having that visual reference on the gain reduction meter is always helpful. Let's take a look at an actual compressor in action and watch as we reduce the threshold until it meets our signal and ultimately exceeds our signal. You can see our input signal on the meters. As the threshold is lowered, the music, the signal, starts to meet it. You can see the gain reduction meter start to flicker and you can see how much gain reduction is taking place. If we now bring the compression ratio up more, we can look at the gain reduction meter and see that that's causing more gain reduction. The meters show you exactly what's happening. These controls do interact, and that's another reason to pay attention to your gain reduction meter. Now that we're on the subject of meters, let's take a look at another compressor control, the gain control. Sometimes this will be called a makeup gain or output level control. Normally, this control should start at unity or zero. It should start where it's neither taking away or adding level. Once you set your compressor, at least roughly, you can set this control. If your compressor has an input and an output meter, then setting this is going to be easy. Look at your input level and look at your output level. Now raise the compressor gain until the output level matches the input level on the meter. Many times, though, you won't have the luxury of an output meter on your compressor. In that case, Look at your gain reduction meter. See where the gain reduction is continuously or nearly continuously hitting on the meter. If that is, for example, 3 dB of gain reduction, then raise the compressor output gain 3 dB to match that. Anywhere that the gain reduction meter is just flashing, you can pretty much ignore that. And if all you're doing is only taking a few dB off the signal and only flashing a couple of the gain reduction lights, then you can pretty much just leave the compressor gain at zero. This brings us to the attack and decay controls, and sometimes there is a hold control as well. We'll let Allie the alligator help us make the point about how these work. Think about the attack as the jaws of the alligator. It's about how quickly the compressor clamps down on the signal when it crosses the threshold. Release is about how slowly it releases its grip on the signal as the signal falls away. Hold would just be how long it holds onto the signal before it starts to release. Many compressors have an auto option, and you can choose that and turn user control off for these controls. Some compressors don't even have these controls in the first place and just have some auto or fixed level control built in. Auto settings will definitely work well for many things. Generally speaking, manually a quick attack and a moderate release as well will work for many things. Vocals are typically fine with either approach. 
Now, where you might want a longer, slower attack is for percussive instruments, like drums. A slow attack allows the initial transient, the attack of the beater or the stick, to come through unaffected, and then it clamps down on the signal. That also might be true of a bass player or acoustic guitar player, somewhere that you might want the attack of the pick, or if your bass player plays with a percussive style. As for general settings, for live music, for vocals, 2 to 1 is very light. 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 is more common. At 6 to 1, you're starting to get pretty aggressive, threshold dependent, of course. On the other hand, 6 to 1 for something like a bass guitar is not all that aggressive. Many times live, for something like the vocals, I might only be lighting the first gain reduction light consistently and only flashing the next couple of lights occasionally, depending on the scale of the meters. Basically knocking off the peak 6 dB or so. And alright, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.